the Joe Rogan experience. What's your thought on Khabib Nurmagomedov? Extremely embraced. This kid is uh, b deeply, deeply impressive. I've, um, uh, he's come into the academy a couple of times before fights. I've never actually seen him train. Um, he, uh, after his fight in Madison Square Garden, he bought himself and a group of his friends, his training partners, came into the academy and trained in my Monday afternoon class. Khabib didn't train. He just sat on the bench because he just fought on Saturday nights. So of course, mm -hmm. he's not going to train. But his um, his uh, his training partners came in and trained with the squad, and that was a fun afternoon. They rolled with, um, I think, mostly Nicky Ryan, and um, uh, it's hard for them, of course, because it's submission grappling. That's not really what they do. They, they right. do more the interface of, of um, grappling combined with striking, so they had a hard time. But, but uh, he struck me as a very, very nice person. He's shockingly big for his weight division. So shockingly. Shockingly yeah. so. Um, like all the people coming out of the Caucasus regions of Russia, his wrestling is extremely good. Um, they, they have probably the best wrestling program in the world. That whole area stretching from uh, uh, Ossetia through Dagestan, through Chechnya, all the way down to Iran, that, that area is just the hotbed of wrestling in the world. And it shows with all their fighters. They're all strong in wrestling. And then they just add to that the various skills, and you've got a tough, tough group of people. Yeah, I was extremely... I've been, I've been impressed with every single performance he's had in the Octagon. I mean, he's uh, undefeated, which is a, incredibly rare in yeah. and of itself, yeah. but in the 155-pound division, even more impressive. But the way he mauled Barboza was, that was just like, shocking. Jesus yeah. Christ. Yeah, yeah. and you seen? could see the fight was essentially over halfway through round one. Yes, it was just, yeah. yeah. You could see it in Barboza's face. Yeah. He was drained. Yeah, that was an incredibly impressive performance. Um, I, uh, uh, obviously, there's still... You can't put him yet in the greatest of all time no. category, but uh, well, he hasn't won a title. Yeah. He hasn't even challenged yeah. for it yeah. yet. Yeah, but you definitely get the sense that if if he had had a title fight by now, he probably would have been a champion by now. Him versus Connor, Jesus Christ, that's what I want to say. Him versus yeah. Connor in Russia, or him versus Tony, um, Tony Ferguson, and yeah. him would be a very yeah. interesting yeah. fight. Yeah. What's interesting about those two fights is you have basically polar opposites. Khabib Nurmagomedov is a control based fighter, whereas uh, Tony Ferguson is a scramble-based fighter. And just that clash in styles is going to be fascinating. With regards to Conor McGregor and Khabib Nurmagomedov, the feeling one gets is that if they did fight, it would be a complete shutout in one of two directions. <laughs> it's either like a man beating up a child on the ground, or it's just a flush knockout. A guy unable to cover distance properly and walking into a left hand and just being catastrophically KO'd. And yeah. you feel like it, it, there's potential for it to go in both directions. Uh, and it's, it, that's a fight I don't think goes the distance. It's, uh, it's one way or the other. Yeah, I agree. Um, I feel like what Connor presents that's interesting in terms of danger is speed and one-shot knockout power yeah. with his hands. And Khabib has been hurt coming in. By Michael Johnson. Yeah. It's really the only adversity he ever yeah. suffered inside the octagon. Yeah. And, he, and he dealt with it well. Yeah. That's, that's a good sign for Khabib. It's yeah. the sliver of hope that every opponent clings to. Mm. They watch that one moment where Michael Johnson clipped him. Yeah. And you're like, look, look, he's human. Yeah. He can be hurt. <laughs> it's like the scene in Terminator. If it bleeds, I could kill him. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that was Predator. Oh, yeah. What did I say, Terminator? Yeah. yeah. You fucked just up. fucked up your honor of reference. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, I did fuck it up. Um, but... I think that Connor has been overwhelmed on the ground, though. Yes. And he's been overwhelmed by Nate Diaz. Yeah. And he's been controlled on the ground by what, Chad yeah, Mendez. One gets the feeling that whatever amount of control they were able to impose on him would be nothing compared with what Khabib could impose. Yeah. Moreover, Khabib is um, it's a much more dangerous form of control. Khabib, yes. uh, Khabib has a program of hitting people on the ground which is substantially better than either of the two athletes you just mentioned. Yes. Um, and the big difference is when Khabib gets you on the ground, you're not getting up. No. You're getting mauled. And it's almost like a spider. Like he's injecting venom into you and slowly <laughs> but surely like weakening your body. Yeah. Like you, you see after the first round when Barboza gets up, it's like, okay, you mean he's, he's alive still. Yeah. But this is a different person now. Yeah. And going into the second round, 
I mean, Barboza gave an admirable account of himself. Yeah. I mean, showed himself to be a true warrior. He did try a couple of spinning back kicks. And yes. Some of them were relatively close. You know? Barboza's kicking heavy strategy, though, is very different than Connor's. Connor's kicks are just the opposite. His kicks are just probes. Mm. He's sort of poking at you, poking at you, and putting things out in front of you, and he's just trying to ding. He's just yeah. trying to drop that hard left hand on you. He's a fascinating guy to watch. Fascinating guy uh, to watch. I, I always undervalued him. When he first came in the UFC, I said, oh, it's hype, it's hype. But the more I studied, the more I saw. Yeah. You know, he's, he's very, very skilled. Well, he's also, he mind fucks people. Mm -hmm. He mind fucks people in a way that, um, but I don't think he's mind fucking Khabib. I don't think that works on Khabib. I don't think that's going to no. happen. I just think that we're dealing with a totally yeah. different kind of human yeah. being. Those people from Dagestan are just so hard. It's just a hard part of the world. They're yeah. just, they're made of hardier stuff <laughs> you know what i mean it's just like they have to deal with way more not that people in ireland are soft they're fucking hard people too i just think that with i've always said the most important if you have a pyramid of technique when it comes to uh mixed martial arts the base of the pyramid the most important thing is the ability to control the grappling ability to take a guy down if you can take a guy down and control him you have a significant advantage. You can choose where the fight takes place. And if you're competent in the stand-up, which Khabib is definitely competent in the stand-up, so you are adequate in the stand-up but overwhelming when it gets to the ground, mm. you can present problems with a guy standing up, which, which case is problems the guy has to deal with, the striking aspects which open up the takedowns. Um, I wholeheartedly agree with you, but I'll go a little further. Whenever someone asks me, what are the... What, what what are the programs? What, what do you look for when you see a guy dominating fights? What what, what makes someone go in the right directions with their training and and their, their fighting itself? I always say there's three things. If you show me a fighter who can one dominate the setups, two dominate the pace of the fight, and three how can I phrase this? Dominate the simple direction of the fight. Three things. Dominate the setups, dominate the pace, dominate the direction. You show me a fighter who can do those three things, and I'll show you a fighter who can win 95% of the fights he gets into. Dominate the setups, dominate the pace, dominate the direction. Think about someone like Khabib or anyone who comes from a, uh, a strong wrestling or judo, uh, jiu-jitsu with takedowns based fighters. They're always going to be able to dominate the direction. They determine whether it goes down to the ground or whether it stays standing. Khabib always dominates the pace of the fight. Once you're on the ground, you're on top. The other guy's just reacting to what you're doing, trying to get back up to his feet, etc., etc. You're dominating pace. If there's one weakness that Khabib has, is he's not as strong at dominating the setups to get to those areas where he can dominate pace and uh, uh, et cetera, et cetera. If he's going to lose a fight, it's gonna be in that area. And Connor, more than anything else, is a guy who dominates the setups. You said it before, the kicks are probes, they're not kicks. He's not trying to hurt you with the kicks, he's probing. He hurts you with this. Yeah. Okay, so Connor's skill is he's a master of dominating setups, especially in the standing position. But Khabib's mastery out of those three critical areas for domination in all forms of fighting, is he's a dominant. Uh, he's incredibly dominant in determining the direction of the fight and the pace of the fight. That's why he never gets tired in his fights. He's got a very high work rate, but he never gets tired. You never see him just completely shattered, despite the fact he's working hard the whole time. And the f despite the fact that he significantly weakens himself yeah. to make 155 pounds, yeah. which uh, apparently he's done far better now. He had a real nutritionist heading okay. into this camp, and it was much easier for him to cut the weight. I'd be fascinated to see him fight at 170. Well, that's a plan. Yeah. Apparently, that was a plan, and Woodley was joking around about it, saying he, he'll send him nutritionists. He'll say, like, keep his psycho ass down at 155 was that's his exact funny. That's funny. <laughs> that's his exact quote. Yeah. Yeah, I but think yeah, with, could, the, with regards to your point before, you are saying you know, the, this this core combat skill, the most important one that, that you as a commentator look for when you look at fighters, you know, um, can you determine 
uh, you, you put grappling skill as, as the number one thing, whether it be wrestling, whether it be samba, whether it be jiu-jitsu, or what have you. Um, I, I would go further and say, yeah, there's three things that I look for. Who dominates the setups? Who dominates the pace? Who dominates the direction? 